Good morning and welcome to super snowy Vienna. I'm right here at the Wiener Stadtpark, which is the Viennese equivalent of Central Park, I'd say. And this unique atmosphere is, of course, perfect for creating a short visual story about snowy winter mornings in the city. But it is also perfect for showing you the principles of spot metering and how to apply them to make best use of the OM system, OM1's full dynamic range. Additionally, I will also talk about why I'm not a huge fan of exposed to the right and why just using the dynamic range is sufficient. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. My goal for today is to capture five to 10 images for social media to capture the feeling and flair of this very special winter morning. You have to know that it doesn't snow that often in Vienna, so this is quite special. I actually imagine these photographs to be black and white, and I also want to keep the post processing at a minimum. In order to do so, I will try to get everything right in camera so that I don't have to spend a lot of time afterwards in front of the computer. The main issue with predominantly white scenes is of course that the camera's exposure metering will probably underexpose the scene as it will attempt to make the whites middle gray which is of course too dark. The problem when the camera underexposes a predominantly white scene is that you are not making full use of the camera's dynamic range because you are just using the lower tonal values in the whole dynamic range as there are usually no whites because the maximum the camera will give you is this middle gray. So in order to circumvent that, we have to set the exposure manually and help the camera out. That's why I recommend shooting on days like these in manual mode and use spot metering. So everyone who already watched my video on the OM system OM1's dynamic range knows that the OM1 has a high fidelity dynamic range from minus three to plus three EV. So even when I expose a flat white surface to plus 2.7 or plus three EV, there will be a lot of detail and a lot of structure in there. And I even have one stop of headroom in the file to adjust things should that really be necessary. Apart from that, although I intend these images to be black and white in post-production, I will shoot with what I like to call a flat profile. So I've set the picture mode in the OM1 to muted and adjusted the contrast to minus two. By setting this flat profile, I ensure that the 8-bit JPEG preview that the camera gives me in live view better fits the 12-bit raw output of the camera, allowing me to better judge clipping and tonal value distribution of the scene. So enough talk, it's time to get some shots and see you in a minute. So while I'm taking a short break from shooting, I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about exposing to the right and what I don't like about it. So exposing to the right actually means that you overexpose the scene to the point where the highlights just don't clip. By doing so, you are essentially creating a raw file that has very little tonal values in the shadows. And the idea behind that is, of course, that shadow areas are noisy. 
and you don't want that in your final image. But what you have to do is, you have to edit each of these exposed to the right files in post-production and adjust the exposure. You have to push the tonal values back to where they should be. And while that usually works if you have like one single landscape shot you kind of want to bring back, it can be super tedious and super inconvenient if you are doing what I'm doing right now, shooting a little reportage with many different scenes. Because of the tonal values in each image being quite different, you kind of have to find an individual exposure compensation in post-production for the exposed to the right images. So what I prefer doing instead is making use of the full dynamic range of the digital camera I'm working with and deliberately placing the tonal values where they should be. So in a situation like this today, I want the whites of course to be white but not clipping as there should be structure in the snow. In order to achieve that with the OM-1, as I've stated earlier, I have to put the whites in the plus 3 EV range. And that's it. By doing so, I can just take the raw file as it is, apply the color grading and look, and I'm done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I was able to inspire you to go out and try the spot metering method yourself. Deliberately placing the tonal values is really a neat technique that not only gives you more confidence when shooting, but also reduces the amount of time you spend in post-processing. And for me, that's huge. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.